Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, hi, we're Steve and Judy Walker. Um, I'm Steve. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, uh, Rachel came to me after church and asked me to uh, speak a little bit about our marriage. And um, I declined right away because uh, I thought maybe she was looking for something that was the model of marital excellence. And uh, that's not us. Uh, we definitely don't have a Hallmark movie, do we? Or Hallmark marriage either. No. <laughs> oh, did I mess that up? Anyway, he is right. Um, we are pretty much opposites. We have opposite opinions on everything. We both have strong opinions, and we both are always right. Um, our friends see this in our marriage. In fact, Randy and Sylvia have two deer that they put out on their lawn at Christmas. And one deer is going like this, and one deer is going like this. And they call it the Steve and Judy deer. So um, we've all heard that marriage isn't just some blissful, romantic uh, movie that we are all living in, but uh, as we deal with it, idiosyncrasies with our spouses or we deal with our own failures, we realize that uh, marriage is a lot of hard work. And uh, in that hard work, it actually starts to turn into a, a battle, but it wasn't always like that, was it? No, nope. you're right again, that's twice today. <laughs> we will be married for 55 years in July, and he has been right a few times. <laughs> but the early years of marriage, are filled with newness. You have new furniture, new belongings, new apartment, new house, new babies, sometimes lots of them. And all of this makes your life an adventure. But it's like being a new Christian or being part of a new church. The newness kind of wears off, the rosy glow fades, and then the days or the tri the day to day trials of life can start to wear on a marriage or on a church family. Yeah. We were allotted three minutes to talk to you all this morning, and uh, in that three minutes, we tried to whittle down and try to go back and forth with different ideas, and then Ben preached a couple weeks ago on the church and on the church family and having the importance of the church, so we thought maybe we want to take our marriage experience and um, maybe apply that and parallel that with um, uh, what's going on in the church, our family compared to the church family. Mm-hmm. So do you remember the infatuation with that mysterious new person that made your heart flutter every time they walked into a room? They were perfect in every way. And we were so filled with anticipation about what the future would hold. We were gonna have the perfect life, happy, obedient children, this beautiful, perfect house, and a husband walking in the door, just so cheerful at five o'clock every day. And then I got a night shifter. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we really didn't anticipate the personal conflicts, the messy house, the whining children, the disagreements. No, and that's the way it is with the church family, too. After a while, the newness does wear off. We get to know each other more intimately as we serve together and work together. And some of that newness and that infatuation uh, becomes hard work even in a church. So we have to choose daily to live uh, to serve one another, to care for one another, to be patient with one another, to show each other grace and mercy. And for a difficult marriage or a difficult church situation, the temptation is always to choose to leave. But Jesus tells us to stay faithful both to our spouse and to our church family. So we make a choice, a choice to stay the course, to love, to forgive, to be humble, and to be a servant. So whenever we go out for an anniversary dinner, it seems like um, people find out it's our anniversary and the server always goes, how long have you been married? And we tell her, and she goes, oh, what's your secret? And we always wonder, is there a secret to having a, a, a marriage that lasts this long? When there's so much opposition from the world and even in ourselves, is there, is there some kind of secret to marriage? And is there a secret to keeping a church body together? Um, 4,000 churches close every year, we hear. So what's the secret in getting a church body to not only stay together, but to grow? So there is a secret to holding this all together, um, but it takes both partners and it takes everyone in the church family. It's short, sweet, and can be found in one short question Jesus asked in Luke 646. He says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? And with all the instructions that God gives us concerning husbands, wives, church families, this short verse would be a good one to bring the most stubborn of us back on track. 
Well, we've heard this a lot of times that the strength of a nation will rise or fall depending on what the core family does, the family with the father, mother, sister, brother, the whole works there. But we also see right now that a nation will rise or fall and succeed or not succeed if the church is healthy. So how do you have a healthy church? In this series, Sean and Ben are really striving to bring us into a, uh, a realization of relationships and what God wants with relationships. So um, we need to really pay attention to every one of these sermons, and we need to employ the things that they're teaching us from God's Word. It's been good to obey God and be growing old together as a couple, <laughs> and it's been good to be growing together as a church. And we've been committed to this church since the beginning, just about, and there have been ups and downs, but it's good. It's good to be continuing on and being part of this body as it grows. So let's all strive to obey our Lord in our homes and in our church as we choose to serve each other, choose to forgive one another, and choose to love one another. We choose to do what God says mm -hmm. to do. Jesus made it clear that success in relationships within our family and within our own personal lives is going to bring a lot of joy and peace to individual disciples. But the success of a church is going to do even more than that. When a church loves each other like a family, um, we see that this is an evangelistic outreach, that people are going to be drawn to Christ when they see the love demonstrated in a healthy church. And they all push away Christ when they see an unhealthy church. Jesus kind of said it best in uh, John 13. He said, um, a new commandment I give to you. He's talking to his disciples. A new commandment I give to you. You guys need to love one another. I can imagine what those guys thought, like, that's all he's been talking about. Of course we're supposed to love one another. But then Jesus takes it to the next step. And he said, even as I have loved you, love one another. Well, that made things a little bit more intense. Because how does Jesus love us? Unlimited grace and mercy. Um, considering everybody more important than yourself. Selflessness. How about dying for somebody else? That's a lot of love. And then Jesus points out, if you love each other, and if you love each other like you, like I have loved you, as a church, all men, all people, this world will know that you're my disciples. Loving each other as a church and being a healthy church is basically an evangelistic tool that's going to draw people into um, a relationship with Jesus Christ. And they, everybody uh, in this dark world who's in brokenness and despair is looking for a healthy church. Let's be that church. Let's, um, let's employ the things that we're learning. And you're right for a third time tonight. <laughs> <laughs>
uh, especially with uh, the world or even people within the church critiquing and criticizing his bride. Um, there's nobody that likes to have their bride kicked around. And um, I think that's uh, one of the parallels I see. There's a nurture and a caring, the idea of laying down your life um, for your bride. You know, that um, you would, uh, you're laying aside. And laying down your life doesn't mean none, none of us are really going to have a situation. I don't think we're, or very few of us are going to have a situation where we actually die or have an opportunity to die for our wives. But um, there, is a, there is a laying aside of time, uh, hobbies, preferences, money, whatever it is, that those things that you would selfishly use, you lay those aside because her, her desires or her needs are more important. So. But the same way we're called to treat our husband or wife is how we're called to treat our church family. Yeah. We're supposed to honor and we're supposed to love and we're supposed to give them a lot of grace and we're supposed to serve them. And same things we do in a marriage, we should be doing with our church family. We had we were disagreeing about certain portions of the script and stuff we I'm did on you, the way. We, we both have strong opinions a, on everything. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's it's just like everything is always um, it's always this. And if if Christ weren't in the middle of it, um, I have no doubt that this would have failed a long time ago. I have no doubt. Because this is much more uh, Christ's presence in our marriage is much more healing and much more um, it's the epoxy that holds us together. We don't have permission to do anything but stay together and serve one another. When he's number one, nothing like that could ever happen. When, yeah. you're, when you're closer to, to Christ than you are, you're mate even, you're just your spouse. That puts everything in the right order. Yeah, and Mary Lou's. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I was just Mary Lou's yeah. got this triangle thing she always talks about, and you know you can use your children with a parent or neighbors or whatever, but the bottom two parts of this isosceles triangle are, let's say, it's a husband and wife, and God is at the pinnacle. He's up there at the apex, right? And as we drift further and further from God, we drift further and further apart from one another. But as we seek individually the Lord and we seek Jesus with all of our hearts, we can't help but get closer and closer together. I think that's what's happened with us. Same with the church, though. See, that's one of those good comparisons. Yeah. Because as we get further apart or get closer together, we're also closer together to God. I think as a church... It, this, if, the comparisons are... There's so many comparisons. We're huge on discipleship. Discipleship is getting closer and following Christ more deeply and deeply and deeply all the time. So as we all follow Christ, now we've got a three-dimensional triangle. As we all follow God and get closer to God, what happens to us? We bond as a church family. Man, that's awesome, isn't it? And there you go. That's marriage and that's also the church yeah. family. Yeah, whether it's a marriage or the church, um, whether it's children and parents or the church, you know, the more we spend time together, the more we obey what's in the owner's manual, the, you know, God put all the rules together, put all the stipulations together. If we just obey all those things, we do rub the rough edges off and then we start getting really smooth and we just glide together. It's, it's the best. But the church family just really needs to learn to obey the Lord. If we just do what he says, everything is going to be fine. It's mm -hmm. going to be better than fine, right? Mm -hmm. She agrees. He's right again.